Hi guys, Robo46 here. Now the news is finally out that Johan Zarco will indeed be riding for Aventia Ducati in 2020. Now a few weeks ago we had the news that Carol Abraham had got the sack from Aventia um, and not in a good way either via email. And uh, the, we, we heard rumours and Cameron seen Hale pictures of shore, Zarco talking to uh, Ducati and that Ducati wanted Zarco to, to ride for Avintia. Zarco did not want to ride for Avintia. He came out and said that he, he would rather ride for Moto2 than Avintia because he doesn't think that Avintia are a very good team. Um, obviously, we had the deal between Avintia becoming... Uh, an official satellite team for Ducati and Ducati were going to be giving them more support and that is obviously one of the ways in which they managed to secure Zarco for 2020 but um, yeah Zarco's first time in that garage is going to be a little bit awkward for everyone considering what he said about the team um, and yeah his contract seems to be with uh, Ducati themselves rather than Avintia so he's got a, a a contract with the factory rather than the team so 2020 Johan Zarco will be Tito Rabat's teammate at Rail Aventia and they will be on a 2019 Ducati so both of them will be on GP19s which obviously isn't a bad bike it's, uh, it's, it's a race winning bike so yeah it's going to be interesting to see what Zarco can do on the Ducati obviously he didn't have such a good season on the Red Bull KTM in 2019. He had a pretty bad season, um, which obviously led to Zarco and KTM parting ways um, towards the end of the season and uh, left Zarco with no ride for the final few races of the season. And then obviously we had Nakagami have an operation on his shoulder which meant that Zarko got to ride Nakagami's LCR Honda for three rounds. Uh, he only managed to finish one of them but it, it was a, he'd done pretty well on the bike and he showed some, some good performance. Uh, he had a couple of crashes. Um, and yeah, it, it was kind of looking like maybe Repsol Honda were going to offer... Um, Zarco the, the ride alongside Marquez because obviously we then had Lorenzo who announced his retirement at Valencia right at the end of the season which left um, Repsol Honda without a rider alongside Mark for, for 2020 so we kind of thought the, the Valencian race uh, Zarco needs to obviously show what he can do but we, we, a lot of people thought that maybe that was going to be the way that Repsol were going to go. They're going to go for Zarco. Then obviously they decided on Mark's younger brother Alex, um, and then that left obviously Zarco with no ride for 2020. There was a possibility of a Yamaha test roll because Lynn Jarvis at Yamaha did say that the, the, the door's not completely closed, despite the fact he decided to to um, race with Honda for the final three rounds. And now, obviously, we had the uh, the sacking of Carol Abraham, and now Zarco has been hired. And yeah, so he's gone from um, obviously Tech Three Yamaha to Red Bull KTM this season uh, to a few races on the LCR Honda, and now he's going to be on the Aventia Ducati. Now, I actually personally thought that they were going to announce this maybe before the last test just to to give him a, a small test before obviously they, they stop for the winter but um, yeah so he's obviously missed out on some testing time and some time to adapt to the bike so he's already on the back foot but you know the, the 2019 Ducati is a good bike we, we know that so it's whether the team themselves can obviously get some good setups and that and whether Zarco suits the Ducati um, that was one of the, the main reasons Ducati wanted Zarco is because he's got a similar style riding style to Jorge Lorenzo and Ducati wanted Zarco to ride for him because obviously once they got Jorge Lorenzo sorted on that Ducati he started winning races so yeah we'll have to wait and see um, I can pretty much 
guarantee that he's going to be beating his teammate Rabat in most races. We know Zarko's quick. We know he's got really good pace. Um, he has led a few races before. Um, but yeah, it's his, his attitude hasn't been the best when it's, it's come to, obviously, talking about Avintia and stuff like that. But, you know, he, he almost completely shot himself in the foot, but the, the door was still open with Ducati. And basically, it was his lifeline for 2020 because, you know, if, if he was out of the paddock for a whole season, then it might have been really difficult for him to, to even get a ride again in MotoGP. I mean, we saw what happened with Eunice Folger. Obviously, he, he didn't do the second year of his contract at Tech 3 because of illness. And uh, obviously, he done some rides in Moto2. But, um, yeah, he's uh, obviously not coming back to MotoGP at the at this time. But, um, yeah, you know, he, he's been out of the paddock, so his name hasn't been around for, for a little while. And I think that Zarco, if he hadn't got the, uh, the contract uh, of Vinci Ducati, I think, um, yeah, it may have been almost like the last we saw of him, unless he managed to get a, a ride in Moto2. Obviously, in a way, that's obviously a step backwards um, in terms of obviously class and level. But yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next season, what he can do on that bike. I I, I do hope he does well because, like I said, he is a quick rider. Um, I just think that he needs to kind of, you know, just concentrate on his riding a bit more and his racing a bit more, and not worry about other things or say things in the heat of the moment maybe think a little bit more about what he's saying but yeah he's got he's got another chance possibly his final chance in MotoGP like I said he's got his um, contract with Ducati so he's obviously hoping to, to have a, a decent 2020 he's already said he wants to be obviously within the top 10 um, and then hopefully if he, he does that and he, he proves that he's still quick then maybe 2021 he'll either move to Pramac Ducati or maybe even the, the factory team it just depends on how it goes next season let's just hope he, he comp completes the season as well um, uh, and the team managed to, to give him a good bike and stuff like that so it's going to be interesting 2020 obviously we've got Alex Marquez at Repsol Honda and um now we've got Johan Zarco, who uh, was without a ride. Now he he will be riding for Real Aventia. So that is pretty much it. Obviously, we've got a race going on in the background as Zarco at Le Mans. Um, so yeah, another new bike for Zarco to try and adapt to. And uh, let's hope he has a bit more success on the Ducati than he did on the KTM. I mean, when he got on the Honda... He, he, he was already pretty much quicker than what he was on the KTM so it's definitely the fact that he just did not gel with that KTM and yeah he just wasn't getting on with it and obviously the the, the worse it was getting and the slower he was going and, you know he just wasn't really putting in as much effort because he f was kind of thinking well I'm, I'm not going to push because I'm not really getting anywhere so obviously his performance dipped and that and tailed off and that's why he obviously uh, parted ways from KTM but you know on that Honda he, he did go pretty quick he, he was quite impressive on the, Hon on the Honda apart from obviously the two crashes and the two races and only having the one finish but he was still pretty quick so yeah I think maybe the Ducati might suit him a little bit better but we'll have to wait and see let me know down in the comments guys what you think about Zarco riding for a vintage Ducati in 2020 but anyway guys, I'm going to leave this here, so thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more content, and I shall see you guys in the next video, see you!
Before going to the podium awards ceremony, let's take a look at the final MotoGP race results. Undoubtedly, it was a perfect day for him. In addition to the victory, his position also earns him 25 priceless championship points. It was a very intense weekend. And finally, the moment has come for the riders who put their talent on show to celebrate. With such an exciting race, these three guys deserve the applause of everyone under the podium.